So, I was going to film today, but there are some maintenance guys in my apartment. They're also completely rebuilding my bathroom, which is why I have to uh, walk across the street to the other building. Hey everybody, what's up? Scott Lapierre here again with all the charisma of a cardboard cutout and smooth as sandpaper as always. Thank you very much to everybody who donated on either Sunday night or Monday morning and especially everyone who submitted a question, which I'll devote this next portion of the video to. Um, the second half of this video will, will be me at Fitness Together talking about um, bird dogs. And as you can see, obviously there's no more maintenance guys or stuff over here. I may not be able to use my shower for another day or so, but it needed to be fixed. There was a there was a hole in it about that big. Our water was running down to the uh, the floor below. Nonetheless, let's get to your guys' questions. Um, first off, I don't know if they want me giving out their name. They tend to be very private people, but they did contribute. Um, they contributed the most in a single donation. So thank you guys for that. You guys know who you are. Um, and their question was, which hat will you be wearing in the next video? Now the only reason I wear hats is because when I don't, if my hair is not um, gelled, it turns into a curly mess like that. And the hat I'm wearing is the Hartford Yard Goats, a minor league baseball team uh, from my hometown, or the town next to my hometown. If you guys haven't heard of the Hartford Yard Goats, do some research. Go on Wikipedia, read some of the local paper articles about it. It is hysterical, the things that have happened to that team over the past. 10 months or so, and um, that's why I'm working so hard, putting all these sessions in at FT, um, trying to get all this YouTube money so that I can make the 30 for 30 about it, and that's what these vlogs are, practice for filmmaking. Our next question comes from the owner of Running Brook, her name is Brooke, duh, um, and she recently sent me an email um, where I had to fill out some paperwork by yesterday, although she'll be in fitness together today, so I'll be able to catch up with her then. She sent me an email and had a couple questions attached for the next video, or just kind of in general, but this is how I'm going to answer them. Um, so her question was, how far did I run over the weekend and how did it go? Um, if you guys are following me on Facebook, you'll know that Sunday I did a short 5 mile run. Saturday was a 13.1 mile run, or a half marathon distance run, and it, it was a good run. I'm happy I got through it. Well, my phone went off to tell me uh, my split for the first mile, it was, it was just obvious that time wasn't going to be a factor and it was just going to be about completing or, for lack of a better term, surviving that run. Which I did and, you know, much to Gabby's chagrin, I got home and we ate dinner at midnight. But nonetheless, it went well, I was able to get through it. And like I mentioned in a previous video, if you're running in that kind of heat, take your time, don't be afraid to walk. Um, as long as you're moving, Especially in weather like that, it won't affect your conditioning at all in a negative, uh, in a negative way. Uh, the next question actually comes from my sister Jen. So her question was about caffeine and exercise, specifically running or any kind of cardio where you'll be sweating heavily. Caffeine has a number of noted performance-enhancing um, attributes. What it does is it helps increase energy levels. It stimulates the central nervous system. It increases blood flow. It does that by increasing heart rate and blood pressure because it acts as a vasoconstrictor, meaning your blood vessels constrict. The biggest issue with um, caffeine, and my sister specifically cited this in her question, is that it can also, it's also a diuretic, so if you take too much of it, it can actually dehydrate you when you're running. So, um, my advice is, it varies from person to person. Don't try it for the first time in weather like this because where you'll be dehydrated anyway because it will be a factor. In the mornings especially, I may have a cup of coffee before I go run. Um, I haven't really done any kind of scientific A-B testing to see if it makes me better. It's a tool, apply it how you want to, but don't overdo it. So if, so if it doesn't work for you, you don't need to do it. If caffeine doesn't affect you that much, give it a shot. The brand of coffee, the type of roast, um, where the bean was grown and a whole bunch of other factors also go into the actual caffeine content in a cup of coffee, espresso, latte, whatever whatever your beverage of choice is, Irish coffee. Not before running though. But I can't give you guys any real accurate concrete information at this juncture. But with some more research, which will be coming soon, I'll be able to delve into this a little bit further. Um, just like the next question from, uh, I'll just say his name, Sebi. So Sebi was actually curious about 
breathing while breathing while running and breathing while doing other exercise. Specifically techniques, and dude, you totally caught me off guard with this question. It's something I've done that much research into at uh, at this at the current juncture. But nonetheless, I'll look into it and there'll be a video about it in the future. But to answer your question directly, which was breathing techniques I use, um, one of the things I learned when I was doing a lot of um, bike racing when I was in high school and a lot of training and a lot of other cardio was that I was able to actually breathe in through my nose and my mouth at the same time and exhale through my nose and through my mouth at the same time. With that, practice makes perfect. Obviously try it at home. Don't do it in public, it might weird people out at first. You don't want to be that guy that gets kicked out of the coffee shop for breathing heavily. Our next question comes in from my former coworker, a guy by the name of Brian. He asked me this question a while ago, but through whatever Facebook nonsense has been going on, I didn't get a chance to answer it. And I figure this is also a good way to get my former coworkers to watch these videos. So, um, if you're wondering, the music I listen to while I'm running, it really varies wildly. My current playlist has about a hundred something songs on it. It has everything from Pantera to Tool to uh, the Beastie Boys, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and a whole bunch of other recent acts. Cassavian's a notable one. And mostly just a bunch of like techno or EDM music. Just something that has a good, constant uh, beat to it. So that's what I like to listen to when I run. If you guys have any specific uh, songs that you recommend, please leave comments down below. Listen to Facebook. Um, you can also text me if you have my number. The final question for this video comes from my mother. And it is, who has been your number one fan so far training for this marathon? Come on, come on, it's you. It's been you for the last 25 years, who else would it be? Love you, Mom. One more thing to address before we move on. Um, I'd like to give a big shout out to Don Cabral, who graduated high school the year before me from the same high school, and was also on the track team the half a season that I was on the track team. Don Cabral, I will be running the 3,000 meter steeplechase in the final for the for the gold, silver, or bronze medal tomorrow at I think 10:30 in the morning. So all my uh, friends from Glastonbury, please watch that. Um, I'll be watching it. And Don, of course, good luck, man. So now that that's been taken care of, if you guys have any other questions you'd like to see me answer, uh, links will be down below. If you'd like to contribute and donate to the cause, that link will be down below as well as well as information about Fitness Together, which is where I will be right now. Hey guys, as you can see, it's now slightly later in the day. I'm gonna walk you guys through a bird dog yoga pose. Uh, bird dog is one of my favorite yoga poses. It's, um, it's actually a great way to strengthen the core, hip stability, shoulder stability, and as well as motion control for rotation. So, first you need a yoga mat, which you can't see, but it's right here. Next, you're gonna start with the knees under the hips, and hands under the shoulders. What you want is proper alignment of the shoulders over the hands, proper alignment of the hips over the knees. Next, you're gonna pick an arm. That arm comes out straight. You probably can't see it, but the opposite leg goes out behind you. You wanna make sure everything is still in line and that the back is perfectly neutral. We'll cut to a side unit. You can either reset the hand and the knee, or if you want more of a challenge, you can bring the knee in underneath and the hand down to touch the knee straightening back out while maintaining neutral hip, neutral spine, and neutral shoulder. And repeat, um, I typically have my clients hold for three to four seconds and then do eight to 10 on each side for a total of three sets. And then as they get easier, add more reps and hold for a longer amount of time. So my application of the bird dog and the thinking, especially for runners, is it gets the core to begin to work as a unit. The hips, the shoulders, and the muscles that help control rotation in the core all begin to work together and the body becomes more efficient. The more rotation is controlled, the more the hips and the shoulders work together, the less wasted energy there is, which is especially important when you're running 26 miles. Right, Mike? Right. So that's all for today's video. Again, guys, thank you very much for the donations. The link will be down below, along with more information about fitness together and training with that guy back there. Exactly 10 miles an hour. So wait, wait, what were you saying a second ago? You don't realize... How slow 10 miles an hour is until you're driving 10 miles an hour? Yeah. Running 10 miles an hour, 
feels pretty fast. So wait, Gab, how, how much further do we have to go to hatch that egg? Stop it. I'm not telling you. Why not? I want to know what it is when it hatches. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I'm just going to fade it in. What? No, come on, don't do that. What if it's something cool? It's probably not. It's a 2K egg. 